Can you? Well, there was remember? many sleepless <laughs> nights. We quickly switched it up. YouTube and David Goggins. <laughs> Elon Musk. Or eating broken glass. Oh my gosh, you can relate so much to the pain. How to deal with the yeah. anxiety, the stress. And with how it. to be Let's... happy. Nope, I'm not doing it. I quit. Next step. Absolute meltdown panic. Cut them. Negative Nancy's. Everything we are getting around deep. you. This wasn't on the list. <laughs> Can I just tell everyone we that's not. not true? I bought a tent. That violin's coming back out. <laughs> like, what would you have done differently from what you know now? The key thing that I think that we learned really early on. Name we... one book that you've ever read. You can't say Twilight. <laughs> Uh, Don't you slate me on this podcast. We were married before this podcast. <laughs> so what would be your best advice for somebody that would like to start their own business? I think it would be. If that's too much for you to handle, then it's not for you. Are you introducing it? Hello. This is the Fruity Llama podcast number two. Episode two. We're still here. We're alive. We've carried it on for more than one week. Exactly. Great success. Borat style. So today's episode, yeah. we were going to talk about how we started Fruity Llama. Go right back to the beginning through everything that we went through and all the different stages that we went through, essentially, emotionally, choices that we made, um, all that kind of stuff. Many, many choices. So, I'm going to ask the questions today, Steve. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, when we started Fruity Llama, yeah. what was the initial point where we decided that we weren't going to just do a bit of design on the side in the evening after your day job? What made the move for you to choose to take this full time and ditch work? Um, I think I've always wanted to have my own thing mm -hmm. um to be honest i didn't really like employment i didn't like being i don't like being told what to do but who does <laughs> there's not many people that do so mm -hmm. anyway i did eight years of that and it just got to the point where it was enough i'd had enough i wanted to do my own thing yeah um and i've always been into design um i've got a real attention to detail some call it an issue but i feel like it's absolutely necessary perfectionism perfectionism what i would say cd ish but it's the little things that count the attention to detail that make the difference i've adopted that attention to detail and yeah. carried it through into what i do now with design okay fair enough so from going from that mm -hmm. what steps did we take and did you take whether that be possibly mentally to go, okay, we're opening today, I'm handing my notice in at work. What did you have to do to get to that point? Can you Well, there was remember? many <laughs> sleepless nights involved. I remember that. Mm -hmm. It's like anything. You get used to something for so long, it becomes harder to leave. We're all creatures of habit and routine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once you do it for a certain amount of time, it, it's, it's very difficult. So, um what did I have to do to do that? I had to dig deep, <laughs> get rid of a lot of get rid of a lot of the boundaries that I'd, and hurdles that I'd not overcome mm -hmm. within myself first mentally, mm -hmm. um, and look at things in a whole different perspective. Really, yeah. Realize that there's a different way of of doing things than the general nine to five, um, and I say this every week, but break free <laughs> from the shackles mm -hmm. cheesy but true yeah so from what i remember obviously oh yeah you were involved as well weren't you oh yeah so <laughs> I, i'm more facts and figures you're more emotional and mindset so okay i'll for, take that <laughs> in my facts and figures it was a case of our initial goal Mm -hmm. was for you to work from home, mm -hmm. um, running your own business. And essentially, we wanted... The initial outcome was that we wanted to make the same amount of money mm -hmm. with you having the freedom of time and choice mm -hmm. um, as being employed. That Correct. was goal number one. It was. That was our ideal lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and to get to that point, we had to take a lot of risks and we had to sacrifice a lot. Mm. 
So it was frightening. The sacrifices that we made yeah. were obviously your security. Mm-hmm. So leaving work, that's huge. Um, when it comes to getting a guaranteed monthly wage. When well, we it's have... the financial exactly. element of it all, wasn't it? Yeah, so we've got a mortgage. You're used to having this um, income yeah. every a single security, month. Yeah. A security blanket, basically. Yeah. yeah, so we had a mortgage, we had two cars, and we have two children. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of risk um, to all of our lifestyles, I suppose. Um, so one of the sacrifices was obviously the security of a monthly income. Another one was selling cars. Mm -hmm. We sold both our cars in the end. We weren't car salesmen. (laughs) No. We didn't sell them. We put them up for sale. (laughs) We got rid of them. Yeah. Um, So that was a huge sacrifice. And a lot of people aren't willing to sell materialistic items to get what they wanted. Um, The office that we're in right now was our garage. We spent every single penny that we had in savings to build this office. Just going back to the car thing, that oh. was painful. It really was. It was a hard step. But it had because, to be done. Yeah. And to be honest, after I'd done it, you it didn't bothered. bother me. It was no. just the thought of it. Exactly. So we are now a one-car household, mm. uh, proud Mazda owners. Oosh. And uh, we're quite happy with that. Mm. We don't, at the minute, don't need two cars. There's only the odd occasion where yeah. it's a slight issue. At the minute. <laughs> <laughs> for now. At the minute. Yeah. Until the children need ferrying in different locations. The car gets absolutely terrorised anyway off the kids. So. Exactly. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. So initially, a lot of people to think selling cars, use all your savings, renovate the garage, it's a step too far. Uh, but I think it's a very necessary step that we took because it's opened up a whole new life. No us. risk. No reward without risk. Exactly. There's got to be a risk. Mm -hmm. Like, the people that don't take risks generally end up on a normal flat path. Mm. There is no possible reward if you're not in the game. You can't win if you're not in it. Yeah, I think you're right there. I mean, that stems a lot from how I've been brought up, which is to be safe. and no risk. I understand, you know, it's Mm -hmm. all about staying safe and and Mm -hmm. being guaranteed something. Yes. But I've been brought up that way. So it was even extra harder to make this risk and make yeah. this jump. So yeah. it was absolutely frightening. Yeah. But now I've done it, I'm so much more open to taking calculated oh, risks, calculated not risk. stupid risks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but with um, good calculated means behind them. Yes, exactly. You come from a very risk-free family. Mm. I come from a bit of both, I would say. Because yeah. oh, my family's always been in business. Mm-hmm. So that's where my business comes from and I've always run my own business so I feel like um starting your own business is a relatively small risk because I've already done it yeah. so I know what the rewards are mm-hmm. um whereas for you that was completely all new territory it was alien wasn't it, it was... yeah totally different yeah um but then that leads me on to advice so when we began our journey of possibly opening our own business between us yeah. it was a case of the questions that I would bring are, who did we learn from? Who did we ask advice? Where did we pull all that information and little parts that we started with? Yeah. Who did we learn from? YouTube. YouTube um, it in itself books. is such a great <laughs> place to learn things. Everyone knows Free it, advice. but you know, there's so much out there. It's just finding the, the correct people to listen to. Yeah. And that's an issue at the minute with, it's huge with people selling well, It's saturated, courses. isn't it? With every, yeah. Yeah. So it's finding the correct people that are reliable and that aren't just trying to then sell you a thousand pound course. And how do you look for the correct people? How do yeah. you, you know, yeah. like anything, how do you find a, a nice hotel to stay? So you look at the reviews, yeah. look at people that have experienced it already. Mm. Is it right for you? Are they legit? Yeah. Dig as deep as you can. And then once you have understood that, just learn everything from them. Watch all the videos. Yeah, and it's taking snippets because not everything's going to be right for you. So no. we've pulled from different people. Yeah. And d- different businesses. Yeah. Like, and listening to all the top businessmen, regardless of what industry. And women. And women. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So that was a huge kind of help 
and inspiration as well yeah. for we want to be in a better position than what we were yeah um and then on top of that on you're a book that. reader i am not I am. I am a book reader. I do so, love a good book. What were, what were your most inspirational books that you read when we were starting? When we were starting, well, when we were starting, we initially started with, with web design. That's what we're good at. That's a bread yeah. and butter. So I just wanted to learn as much as I could about web design, not just the design element of mm. it, but how to turn it into a business. Yeah. So... Going back to the YouTube thing, I just watched videos about how to um, build out a system, really, of how to sell websites. Mm. And I wanted to create like a little process that was yeah. smooth, streamlined, and could be multiplied over and over again. Yeah. And used. Yeah. So you changed from going from you wanted to be the designer, and that was the original thing. And yeah. then it completely flipped it on its head. And it was, we want to work on growing our business, not we want to work in our business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah like things evolved well, very initially, quickly initially we were just a freelancer doing exactly. the web, web design work but yeah. quickly that's evolved and changed to yeah now we obviously well, we, i'm working on the business as you said exactly so the first learning curve that we realized was that with you working on building the websites yourself mm -hmm. you're restricted to how much you can earn you're restricting your ceiling mm. um unless you then start employing people so we quickly switched it up and i think this was the this is one of the key points that we have learned is constantly look at what you're doing constantly look at how we can improve how can it be quicker how can it be better and change it as soon as possible because then it yeah it's still a learning curve to change it but you're growing all the time sure you could have easily just sat there all day building out websites and earn a decent wage and i enjoy that yeah that's really where the passion started i've got yeah. the passion for design yeah so it's good really because a lot of business owners out there who are involved in web design agencies or, mm -hmm. or digital marketing, they've never like experienced or got the skills themselves. They've not done it mm -hmm. first. They know yeah. of it or they've read about it. Yeah. But I think when you're you've actually lived it, your field. you're already an expert mm -hmm. and you can transfer that knowledge onto whoever works for you as well, mm -hmm. your team. Yeah. So you've got an upper hand there. Not mm -hmm. everyone, but most people. Yeah. Exactly. So to answer your question about books. Books, back to books. <sighs> there wasn't a particular book. There were so many. And you, like, like again, you take pieces from each. Yeah. But I remember we were getting into SEO as well about mm. search engine optimization, ranking yeah. websites higher, adding yeah. that extra bit of value for any clients that came on. Yeah. So I read a lot of SEO books. I remember one from a chap called Ryan Stewart. And that was like, oh, it's up there. I can see it. The SEO blueprint. Mm -hmm. Now, for anyone interested in SEO, that was a good um, starting point for me, especially. Mm. Yeah. What about that Goggins guy, his podcast? Oh David Goggins. You must have heard of him, everyone. Must have seen him yeah. on YouTube. Joe Rogan interviewed yeah. him. Um, what an inspirational person. I listened to his audio book, actually. Mm. Um, unbelievable. Yeah. And that gave me the motivation, drive Yeah. to... Um, Put in a bit of work because I was yeah. actually kind of like a little pansy before reading that book. <laughs> Still am. In comparison to that. Yeah, but yeah, that, that gave me a kick up the uh, backside. Exactly. So sweet. Stop whinging, let's crack on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so they're kind of where we pulled our inspiration or a bit of extra learning from. So to summarise, <clears throat> YouTube and David Goggins. YouTube. David Goggins. <laughs> Wait a minute. Last night, again, we learned, not learn, but you realise you're not the only one in certain situations. So, Elon, obviously. Elon Musk. You can't say my name and Elon Musk in the Sorry. same sentence. No, I'm saying we learned from Elon. <laughs> it's not even Elon, is it? That's just how we pronounce it. It's meant to be like Elon. Elon? Yeah. Is it? Yes. Elon? Elon. Elon sounds better. Yeah, that's because, it? yeah. Anyway, Elon. so we were watching an interview on him last night and he's, <laughs> he said something about owning a biz new business. He would not recommend it to anyone. Oh, yeah. It's like walking on bro or eating broken glass and yeah. then... <laughs> Running a business is like eating broken glass. Yeah. And we End were off. like, oh my gosh, you can relate so much to the pain yeah. and the ups and downs. It's... A hundred percent. Well, you like hear it all the time, but we, we understand now. It's roller coaster of emotions. We kind of share yeah. 
anxiety together, don't we? We do. Like one day I'm down, it. one day you're up. Yeah. And then we kind of yeah. comfort each other in that sense. When mm-hmm. one of us is feeling crappy, we yeah. pick each other up, don't we? And we oh. play anxiety tennis. <laughs> Ping pong. <laughs> At the minute, yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. It's extremely hard emotionally to run a new business. Yeah, but we it can't carry on like that. Obviously, again, that's something else we're learning, how to deal with the yeah. anxiety, the stress that comes with yeah. these big things. How to be better emotionally. Yeah, and how are we dealing and with it? And how to be Let's, happy. Yeah, how to be that's happy. That's a yeah. huge no, thing. I think we need to realise <clears throat> we need to enjoy the journey. Exactly. And not always think about the end goal. Yeah. Small steps. Exactly. One step at a time. We can't see the whole staircase. You just take one step at a time. And that is a huge thing that I always think about now yeah. that we learn again from somebody else mm. is when you try and look at the the whole staircase and what's at the end and every step in the middle, it's too much for your brain to process. It's absolutely overwhelming. Exactly. So then that turns you to go, nope, I'm not doing it. I quit before you've even begun. Whereas us taking the one step to... Right, well, let's build a home office. Mm. And then the next step, okay, let's register our business as an official business. Mm-hmm. Next step, let's hand in your notice. Next step, absolute meltdown panic <laughs> for eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, next step, try and get cl- customers. Yeah. And then every step is learning how to do each process. Well, that's another thing. It, I didn't really have a client base before I you left. Nothing, no. All the advice on YouTube and everything says build up your client list and then from leave. a design perspective. Um, build up your client list in the background <clears throat> yeah. while you're at your other job and then make the leap. So yeah. you built up these funds. Didn't do that. No. I was 100% confident on my ability alone. I knew the websites I was making yeah. for myself and for my portfolio were mm. of a good quality. I was confident yeah. that it was good enough to carry on with. Yeah, and I think what a lot of people do is they make a business from the industry that they're already in, hmm. essentially copy and paste the business and steal their the custom or some of the custom. Yeah. So they already start out with a pretty decent kind of base, whereas we started from absolutely ground zero, absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a, it was a lot. But it's we have learned. But hey ho, it was our choice. Exactly. What we whinging at? <laughs> I'm not whinging. We're <laughs> we're explaining. Yes. Um, but what was I gonna say? I'm gonna put a small violin in the background <laughs> of this bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So back to kind of where we got our um advice from or things like that. Yeah. So. Another thing that I feel was a key learning point is not to get advice from family and close friends unless they have walked the walk. Because there's two sides to this. There's the fact that you can get advice from anybody, mm-hmm. but if they haven't physically done it themselves, themselves, you can't really take it on and actually learn from what they're saying because they haven't yeah. done it themselves. True. It's just their opinion. Mm-hmm. And then it's learning to try and ignore said opinion so that it doesn't distract you from the goal that you have um and then there's the side of that your family are gonna tell you what's best to keep you safe and secure Mm. that is not high risk yeah which again with most people would be like oh yeah no that's true i might lose my house i'm Mm. not gonna do it yeah so you've got to kind of they're only looking Not out for you at the same out, time. But you can see the reasoning yeah. behind it because we're parents and we understand it as elves. We're the yeah, same you with want our as kids. As risk but, free as possible, but that isn't possible when you go into business. Yeah, there comes a point where it's you need to think for yourself and, and make the mistakes yourself in order yeah. to uh, to learn and grow. Exactly. And this was the thing. Le- like all the mistakes aren't mm. necessarily mistakes, they're just learning curves that you pivot from and then continue your growth. Yeah, failure's good. Yeah. Like and as we discovered, most businessmen have like a million failures behind them and one amazing successful and journey. And women. Oh, jeez. Fucking extra. Sorry. So, yeah. There's lots of different advice that we pulled from different areas. Um, But it's surrounding yourself as well with people that have more knowledge than you is a huge thing, isn't it? For the best advice that you can get. Yeah. Going learning from circles of new friends and new colleague like that you know that you can pull from. Yeah, and anybody being... that, that that's bringing you down all the time, get out your life. Life's yeah. too short. 
cut them, friends, family. <laughs> negative Nancy's. Absolutely. You don't want the negative Nancy's in your brain because it's bad enough having your own no. negative thoughts in your head. <laughs> sure, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But we've met a lot of business people in a very short amount of time that we've been inspired by that are local businesses um, that have made something out of nothing hmm. and it's yet to, and it's, the key thing is time patience like you say to me you've got to be patient um and th- it might have taken them 15 years but now they're really successful so we have to remind ourselves that we're at the very beginning of our journey and yeah. patience is key and consistency in what we're doing but what are we 14 months now into our Something journey like that. and what we've <clears> achieved in in this time alone is but when we look back, fantastic. Would yeah. we have thought we'd be in this spot now mm-hmm. in terms of the clients that we've worked with? Yeah. You know, we've even started a podcast. I'd never thought <laughs> I'd be in front of a, a microphone chatting about what we've done. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's crazy, but you don't always see that until other people tell you yeah. or you actually stop and think. And look back. Look oh, back. Good. And remind yourselves, oh yeah, we've actually yeah. made all these steps. Mm-hmm. We are actually doing okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah. remind yourself of what your original goal was, because your goals constantly change. Yeah. So like we keep saying the original goal was freedom of time and still having a decent income. Yeah. And that's exactly what we've created, really. Mm-hmm. So essentially, goal number one Yay, we've done it. But yet, yeah, you still don't feel like you're a success. Well, no, you're on to think... the next goal and the next exactly. goal. Exactly, the there's always something and else. that's why it's important to have a breather from time to time and just yeah. take in everything that's happened. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. And I think it doesn't matter what level of business you're in, what turnover you have, what profit you have, you're always on to the next thing. Yeah, when it's and your you're, own, absolutely. You're never satisfied, I suppose. It'd be interesting to see how many business owners are satisfied because satisfaction isn't actually what you want. You want exceptional, don't you? Like some people might be happy with satisfied, well, but it's in danger of being that itch that you can't scratch. So at the end of the yeah. day, isn't it? You need, if that's what makes you happy, then mm-hmm. that's probably not correct. You know, happiness should be the key. The that he- should be the, the goal. Here and now, that's the goal, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. The time that you've got right now it should is. be the happiest. It what is. What you've got. Look at look at everything that you have. Your family. Yeah. All, all the things like that. Mm-hmm. If you're chasing constantly, I don't yeah, know, wealth. Yeah, you're never happy. You know, health is comes first, isn't yeah. it? Family. Mm. Wealth helps you. It's not the yeah. be all and end all, but it does allow you more options. I, I think happiness is everything Can't we that's are getting around deep. you. This wasn't on the list. <laughs> What, what is the meaning of happiness? <laughs> Everyone has their own uh, goal for happiness. Yeah. My goal for happiness. What was is your goal for happiness to right have, now? Go on. To what, have right time now. Time with our family and us, yeah. and be on our own time. Yeah. That that is what has made us most happy. Being able to go, oh, like let's just go and book a quick weekend away with the kids and not think we have to be back for Monday or Friday or whatever day it is because we've got to go back to work at nine. It sounds like we don't do any work. <laughs> we just book weekends away. Can I just tell everyone we that's not. not true? We went on a full twelve month holiday strike to do this. Yeah. yeah. Not to do this podcast, but to do this business journey. I bought a tent. That violin's coming back out. <laughs> I bought a tent. It was awful. You shouldn't have bought the tent for what? And it was a fortune. And I hate camping. <laughs> we tried it for one night. It was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> from the beginning, like, what would you have done differently from what you know now? Honest answer. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Terrible answer. No. Why is it? <laughs> Because going back to the failure and the mistakes, they're yeah, all learning do. curves. So I wouldn't change any of the mistakes I've made yeah. because I wouldn't be where I am right this instant now. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't like to take a free pass and skip all that because I'll have learned no, nothing. exactly. So that's my answer. Okay. What about yourself? The key thing that I think that we learned really early on mm. that I would implement in every conversation is asking customers what their budget is <laughs> because that was a huge thing that was terrifying for you to ask at the start yeah didn't want to ask it Mm -hmm. uh but that was key to gaining contracts and gaining work regardless of what industry you're in if you're dealing with customers and trying to gain contracts you kind Mm. of have to gauge 
what the idea is mm. because you can either way undercharge or way overcharge and either way you lose out. Where Name we... one book that you've ever read. <laughs> you can't say Twilight. Uh, that's all I got. Heat Twilight, magazine. one to whatever. I don't even know how many there were. That was the only book I've ever read. I am not a book person. I am a practical human being. So um, a book people aren't <clears throat> practical. You, um... Uh, <laughs> Don't you slate me on this podcast. On the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and the, we're two we different... were married before this podcast. <laughs> However, we're two different humans. You are more technically minded, mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. I like it. Keep going. Um, funny. Oh, oh, is this a marriage session really? now? Um, I am more hands on, and just get stuff done you're more practical i'm more creative i'm the thinker creative you're practical and together we're a nice blend to to yeah, uh, we complement each other impulsive and impatient and i rein you back a little bit and on the leash are <laughs> <laughs> perfectionism or cd so we somehow have to meet in the middle we and do. we seem to have built something that is doing all right so what would be your best advice steve for somebody that would like to start their own business. Whew. Best advice for... One thing. Okay. I'm going to do an Elon now. Oh. Elon. Elon. And I'm going Elon. to pause and actually think about the question to give my best answer. Interesting. Pausing now. Hmm. Hmm. One thing. Yep. think it would be back to the mistake thing oh. don't be frightened of making a mistake mm. it doesn't have to be perfect from the start mm. and that has been a massive learning curve for myself yes. being a perfectionist good job steve thanks <clears throat> i like that answer <laughs> yep that's good okay mine would be to believe in yourself <laughs> and take a risk, a calculated risk. Because if you never make that move, you're always going to be in that same position. And you can always learn from one's mistakes, like you said, and yeah. then do it better next time. Mm -hmm. There's always a next time. Like, what is the worst case scenario going to be? And if you write it out on paper, what's the worst case scenario if that's too much for you to handle then it's not for you tune in next time Ooh. to podcast number three which will be next week what topic steve i don't know <laughs> we'll see fruitylama.co.uk visit the website take a look at what we do thanks for listening bye